Hello everybody and welcome back to another online lecture for organic chemistry and in today's lesson we're going to talk about naming alcohols. So this should be somewhat uh, familiar to you at this point especially if you've gone through the organic one lectures we've talked about naming alkenes, naming alkynes, naming alkyl halides. So naming in general should be pretty um, straightforward for you at this point. But just to review uh, when you have a specialized functional group, there's three major components uh, when you're naming the chain. And if you have issues with this, you should go back and find uh, the video on naming regular alkane chains, where we talked about this in great detail if it's been a while. So number one, we need to find the longest chain. And when we find the longest chain, it needs to contain the functional group. So find longest chain with... The hydroxyl group because we're talking about alcohols here so whatever my longest carbon parent chain is it has to contain that alcohol group when i go to name it i cannot leave the alcohol as some side substituent um, there will be cases later where i may be able to if i have a higher ranking functional group like a carboxylic acid and an alcohol is off to the side i'd rather capture the carboxylic acid in the main chain than the alcohol but that's neither here or there right now. We're just going to focus on alcohols. So, two, after we find the longest alcohol chain, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to make sure that we give the lowest number. So remember when you're numbering your chains, you're going to give the lowest number to the alcohol, the lowest possible number. So whenever I'm numbering, I normally I'm going to number to give all of the substituents the lowest possible priority. When you have a specialized functional group, that functional group is going to take priority over other substituents. So in other words, if I have an alcohol present and then I have an ethyl group and a methyl group, even if those ethyl and methyl groups could take a lower number, the alcohol gets priority over that. Okay, so remember low numbers are higher in priority when we're talking about naming. So the lowest number is going to go to the alcohol group. And then finally, when I finish my naming, I'm going to end the name with the suffix O-L, right? So we've, had, we've seen with alkenes, E-N-E, alkynes, uh, Y-N-E, and now we're talking about alcohols. We're going to end it with O-L. So some common ones, methanol, right and ethanol which is drinking alcohol ethanol and methanol would have a methyl CH3OH ethanol CH3 CH2OH so on and so forth I could have propyl uh, propanol I could have isopropyl alcohol which would have an isopropyl group right so isopropanol would be a CH3 a CH a CH3 and then an OH that would be isopropanol propanol. and um, that would be rubbing alcohol the type that you would normally pick up in the store so so on and so forth all right now I'm going to give a couple examples here and we will work through them if you have additional trouble with this I would suggest picking up a textbook going through it and practicing because you should be pretty well exposed to this sort of stuff uh, from now on. And while I'm writing these, I just want to mention uh, we are not going to be naming uh, to any great extent phenols and enols in this chapter, as we mentioned ahead of time. We will talk about phenols in the uh, portion where we start talking about acidity, which is actually going to be the next portion of the uh, online lecture course. However, we are not going to talk about naming them in this particular uh, video or chapter. We will get to an aromatic chapter, and in the aromatic chapter, we will give full attention to naming phenols along with uh, many other functional groups that are contained on aromatic compounds. All right, so give me one second here, we're almost finished. Uh, these are H's, if I just leave them blank, those would be methyls. And then finally, I'm gonna give a slightly more challenging one let's get a benzene group here 
And I'm not going to directly put the alcohol on there because that would make a phenol. So we're going to we're going to have some branching that comes off of here. CH, CH, CH3. And we'll put a CH3 up here. And we will put an alcohol down here. Okay, so let's name these three. So I need to find the longest chain that contains the alcohol. Well, in this case, one, two, three, four, five. This straight chain right here in number one would contain the alcohol group up here. So when I get ready to number this, remember the alcohol takes priority. In this case, it's pretty easy because the alcohol right here, okay, is on the same group as the methyl substituent. So certainly I want to number from the left because I would get a two instead of a four on that carbon. So it would be one, two, three, four, five with my numbering. And on carbon two, I find both of my substituents and it's a methyl and the alcohol. Now remember, the alcohol is going to be summed up in the suffix of the chain. So I can go ahead and I can list this as two, what's my other functional group? Methyl, right? And then another two, because I need to clarify where this alcohol is. And then if I have a five-membered chain, it's a pent, right? Remember those prefixes. Pent, and it's not pentane, it's pent and all. So 2-methyl, two 2-pentanol two would be the name of this compound right here. All right, so let's take a look at this guy right here. If I were to name the main chain, it's going to be a cyclo, right? And if you look here, I have two alcohols. So I don't know if you guys remember, we have mentioned what a double alcohol is referred to before. When we were going through our alkene chapters, we had some synthetic techniques that gave us double alcohols. That would be a diol. So if I have a six-member chain, it would be a cyclo hexane and then after that I need to make sure that I consider the diol so it would be cyclohexane diol okay now I need to clarify where the alcohols are one of them would certainly be in position one because I have a ring so I can either start down here or up here right so I'll just start up here I'll say one two three four so it would be one four for cyclohexane diol and there's something else missing from this so extra bonus points if you guys realize what it is we cannot forget stereochemistry it's cis right these alcohols have a stereochemical relationship to one another and so this is cis one for cyclohexane diol when i'm looking at this all right and so finally i'm gonna just so i have enough room we're pointing to this guy up here we're gonna name it down here if you take a look at this, all right, the benzene, if I have the benzene here, the chain that contains the alcohol is over to the side here. And so therefore the benzene itself is considered a substituent because it does not contain the alcohol. And rule one says the longest chain has to have the alcohol, right? So if I take a look at this, the benzene is actually going to be considered one large substituent. So my longest chain here is this guy right here one two three four now i may have to renumber that properly but it's this sort of boom like that right that's my chain right there so if i have a chain of four carbons that's going to be a butte so that'll be the main part of the name okay and i know i have an alcohol so it's going to be a butanol now the question is where is the alcohol here well, if I number this way, I get one, two, three on the alcohol, four. If I number the reverse way, I get one, two for the alcohol, three and then four. So the question is, should it be a two phenyl and a three for the alcohol or a two alcohol and a three for the phenyl? And when I say phenyl, okay, phenyl is the term used, not phenol, phenyl is the term used when I have an aromatic ring as a substituent. So hopefully you realize, based on rule two, the lowest number goes to the alcohol. So that means I'll number this as one, two on this carbon right here, three, and four would be up here. So if I take a look, that's going to be a two-butanol, right? 
And then on top of that, I would have a 3 phenyl. So the proper name for this molecule would be 3 phenyl 2 butanol. All right, so I hope this helps. Those are the general rules when we're naming alcohols. Don't forget about your diols. I tried to include some stereochemistry and some larger substituent groups. If you have any questions, you're welcome to leave them in the comments. Again, I always encourage you to practice, and I will see you next time where we will be talking about alcohol and phenol acidity. So I'll see you guys there.